welcome to this week's episode of the Chronic Comeback Podcast. Um, this week, I'm really excited to have on the show uh, Megan Roberts. Um, I'm particularly excited about this because previously we've had a lot of people on the show that have been, you know, either a little a little bit older. Uh, I don't like to think, think of myself <laughs> being old, but maybe people, you know, in their in their uh, early thirties up to kind of in their in their fifties. And we haven't had anyone like really representing that lower age bracket, someone who's young, someone who's around people who, you know, are, you know, should be the most carefree time of your life. And um, Megan's story is very much, you know, of that, of that ilk where she was, um, she came, well, it was actually her family. Uh, so she had uh, a successful career in dressage. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That- yeah, yeah, you got it, you got it before whether that was the correct pronunciation um, everything looks so positive uh, for her future but then crazily her mum both her mum and her sister came down really ill and uh, had developed uh, Lyme disease symptoms and so she watched them go through a terrible terrible time and then unfortunately uh, went through the same thing herself developing Lyme, Lyme disease and Lyme disease symptoms and everything that goes with that at such um, I believe it was, were you 19? Yeah, yeah. 19. I was in college. Yeah. So, I mean, at 19, you know, going, <clears throat> uh, and going through all the, the, the mental uh, trials and tribulations of going through that, uh, at that at such an age, but then actually pushing through that. And she's now out on, on the other side um, and has set up her own business, which is amazing. When I think about what I was up to at 22, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't even contemplate getting a getting a real job, let alone setting up a business. Uh, but actually, coaching uh, young young riders, and that was actually um, which was amazing. Megan reached out to me about this episode because she wanted to help other people who were young, going through a similar situation to her, and really talking about the mental side of it. And so, sorry that was a longer intro, but I thought it really really needed. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on and. Uh, yeah, really brave of you, like reaching out to me and actually, you know, coming on the show and talking about your story. So thank you so much. No, no, thank you so much for having me. Honestly, I really appreciate it. Um, and it's just great to have a platform to, you know, reach out to people that I know are probably in, you know, really similar situations and just don't know how to talk or cope with it. You know. Definitely. So thank you. No worries. Well, yours is a bit of a unique story. Uh, just because of the fact that you had evidence of people so close to you going through a chronic health situation, which is, I mean, that must have been challenging in itself. But could you talk us through the story, like how life was before your your mum and your sister got sick? And then just talk us through that story of, you know, everything really, if you could. Yeah, so, um, okay. <clears throat> so I think when I was growing up, like, everything was really normal you know I thought to myself well I'm like a really normal kid and um, (laughs) nothing's gonna go wrong in my life Um, and I I just was so lucky you know I I counted myself really really lucky really really blessed every day Um, and I was particularly blessed to have like horses and a really successful career Um, as you mentioned you know with dressage and life was good, you know, I was going to school and things like that and really loving it. Um, and then I went to work away because I was quite independent when I was 17. And um, so I went and worked away and rode horses there. And my future was looking really, really bright. I had a lot, a lot of plans. Um, I wanted to go like abroad to work as well. And then I think I was. 18 um and uh, throughout this as well I was a big party animal and I still am a big party animal you know um <clears throat> I loved going out and things like that I took my competitions very seriously but I did also like to play you know party hard as well um so I was 18 and I came home from that job because um I wanted to study in college for a bit And then that's when my sister, um, you know, really, really got ill, really, really ill. Your younger or older sister? My older sister. 
So she's 10 years older than me. Um, yeah, but we, you know, we're really, really close. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, yeah, so she got really, really ill, was in and out of hospital. Um, and similar, you know, to a lot of the podcasts I've been listening to that you've already done, the doctors just didn't know what was going on and disregarded her and things like that. You know, the typical story. Um, I don't think I have to go into detail, but, um, and yeah, that was just a really worrying time for us all, I think. And it just sort of, it didn't break our family, but it just, you know, it definitely disconnected us all because this massive thing was going on. My sister was so, so ill and we didn't know why. Um, and then we found out why. Uh, you know, Lyme disease, and she then started her uh, medication, and then my mum got it as well. So that was just... So I think it was probably, I can't remember, but it was about probably a year after, um, so my mum had been caring for her a lot, Mm. you know, she was in bed a lot, and then... um, she then became really, really ill herself. So then it was upon my dad and myself to care for both of them. Um, And just seeing them, you know, I think anyone who's listening can understand how much it takes from your life. And to see it take, you know, my sister's life from her and my mum's life and, you know, everything, my mum stopped her business, um, my sister stopped her business. My sister was like a massive traveller um, and surfer and she just didn't surf for like three years. Um, so it was really, really difficult, you know, and just carrying water and carrying tablets up, up the stairs all the time, things like that. Um, so yeah, that was hard and then, but we got through it and I think we benefited from it and then, um, it was February 2000 and I want to say 18 or 19, I'm not sure. Um, I came back from a ski holiday and my mum had secretly sent away tests for me um, for Lyme disease. <laughs> um, like she got my blood done and things like that. It was, it was all a bit like iffy. I don't <laughs> She, she got my bloods done, but I didn't really know what it was for. And I was like, so skeptical. I was like, I haven't got Lyme disease. Like, I'm fine, you know? Um, but I just want to mention as well, actually, I was always, as I said, like party animal. Um, but I was always that friend, you know, who was ill. Mm. You know, always the one with my head down the bog and always the, the liability on a night out. My friends, God if they're listening, um, you know, thank you so much because they dragged me out of so many nights out um, where I was just sick and just, or blacked out or something or other, you know, the total liability and I hate myself for it. I always ruined a night out. Um, So yeah, coming back to what I was saying, I came back from a ski holiday and um, yeah, got the results. I was positive for Lyme as well. Had you, sorry, had you had any symptoms up until this point? Just a lot of sickness, a lot, a lot of sickness um, and a lot of mental health, um, anxiety, things like that. But, you know, quite things I think a lot of people deal with. um, So didn't stand out as any... um, you know, symptoms to Lyme disease. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and then, so, I'll, and I'll touch upon a few of the things you said uh, in, in a bit, but so you got the positive test for the Lyme disease and at that point, your mum and your sister were still quite ill? Yeah. So they were still ill. <laughs> and it was like... And the dad must have... Uh, I know he did he did he was you know 
and and I took it for myself as well I was like oh my god I was being really really strong for them and then suddenly I wasn't the strong one mm-hmm. I was the one that was needing looking after and I didn't know how they were going to look after me and if they would yeah. um so it was just a, a house full of sick people for a very very long time did you so in terms of your symptoms did they take from did they start to progress like uh from that point like what what happened with your symptoms and can you talk to us a little bit about what those actually were just because i know with lyme disease it's white varies, yeah all kinds of different things and was it the same for all three of you no it was completely different um so like when i started the um you know when i went to the doctor and got the medication things like that that's when I really started to see the symptoms and actually what was going on. And it all started to just come out in me. Um, So I had a lot, a lot of brain pressure. You know, I could hardly feel uh, the sides of my temples and things like that. It was, it was awful and um, really, really, really chronic back pain, terrible back pain um, and just horrendous, dark dark thoughts you know horrible horrible thoughts I think it really really touched on my brain mostly um and my back and then and my gut so I had a lot a lot of allergies um I got an allergy test and I found out anything that I wanted to eat so any cakes or chocolates or anything nice was off the list um so that yeah which which isn't ideal when you're when, you, when you're 18, 19. That's the thing, yeah, literally. And, you know, that was the hardest thing because if we were going out um, for, like, food or anything like that, I think I went to one restaurant once. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I told them all my allergies and uh, my intolerances, and I think <laughs> they said okay, well, all you can have is, like, the hummus. <laughs> and that's all I had. Yeah. You know, going out for a really nice meal, and it's just, it's just, that's when you just really, you're not normal. Mm. That's, a, that's the thing, it's the really shit thing. And, you're just not normal. And so, so how did things progress from, from there, from, from memory, your, then your <clears throat> actually start to get, to get better, is that right? Yeah. So they got better, um, and it was it was good in a way because I had them to lean on, you know. Like, um, I just want to say as well how I'm sure, like, if there is anyone young listening, how difficult it is to accept, you know, that you have this thing, and it took me, I think. I think it took me three months to tell my boyfriend that I had it at the time. Um, And then it took me about six months to tell my close friends. And I just, it was, I was just dealing with it all in the dark and putting on loads of makeup, uh, you know, clothes, doing my hair, covering all this shit up um, to just present myself as I, as I was that person you know that that person who was you know the life of the party and 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 then just coming home whacking it all off and just being really really ill Mm -hmm. so like I can understand how the acceptance is is the most difficult thing I think Mm -hmm. for me it was anyway um what 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 was it that actually got you to that that point then like what happened because I, I completely agree with you um something I still struggle with now um mm. uh, like and it is really important I've talked a lot about in recent episodes I'm doing so much more reading on it about um like retraining your mind and a lot of it is acceptance of, of what you've got going on and because then you're not as like uh it doesn't trigger you as much you're not like because it, it creates more stress which then makes the symptoms worse. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, no, you're right, you're right. No, carry on. No, just what, so what was it that got you, got you to that point? Or are you still, I mean, could you talk about a little bit about that, but also, you know, you, you did start to, 
we'll talk a little bit about your mum and uh, sister improving and then you improving and that and that um, story. Yeah, okay, so uh, they started to improve a bit. Um, and it was funny because as they started to improve, I started to decrease. Um, and they were great, you know, because I could lean on them and they really understood what I was going through, you know. And I'd say something like, oh my God, my hands feel numb. They'd be like, yeah, I had that, you know? And it was like, like I can't feel my feet today. And like, yeah, I had that yesterday as well, you know? And it, it, we had a laugh about it. You've got to laugh about, you know, you've, you've got to make a joke out of things. Um, <clears throat> and we definitely did. Um, and it was great as well because we were all researching, so we could share our research and things. Um, But I think, yeah, I just decreased, 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 decreased. Um, and then they got better and better, which was really, really good. Um, so then I just, like I said, I was sort of living like just this double life. Um, I was decreasing, but... I was trying to still, I don't know, it was, it was a really, 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 really weird moment in my life. I was just pretending to be somebody who was absolutely fine. Mm. And I was still competing at the time and still trying to go, I was going to these championships and things like that. Um, and I was competing at a really high level. And it was only a six minute test. But after that test, I would be like, shaking and throwing up and and things like that but I, I I didn't want anyone to know that that I that I was it was it was really strange really strange no I think I, that for me completely resonates um I mean actually I, I didn't because I was search, still searching for a diagnosis I I was just like right people are telling me I'm 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 fine I'm just gonna carry on like normal even though I felt terrible so I was going yeah. in the morning, I was playing football, going to the gym, like pushing myself so hard at work, barely sleeping, because I was like, well, screw this, I'm just going to carry on. And uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I really get that, the whole kind of, you know, the, it's almost like, yeah, double, a double lifestyle you're living. Literally. And the lifestyle that you're living internally, I, I, I completely get, and we'll talk, I, I want to talk a bit about the party inside of things because, again, that, that resonates. You know, you can be there at a bar or something and everyone's just talking and laughing and you're laughing. But, like, you're you're, there. deep down you are thinking about, like, the fact that you don't feel normal and you've got all this stuff going on. And also, I don't know about you, but the guilt that you're doing this, mm. you're doing something that is perceived as being unhealthy and you've got a health problem, like... Am I doing further damage to me? Did, did you have thoughts like that? No, absolutely. That's so interesting that you said because um, I think that it was a major thing. And you, you feel guilty on, on your body, on yourself, you know. And, um, but then there's that, that internal argument where you just you think, well, I'm young. You know, I'm not going to have this again. You know, there's... I might not go to this party again or, you know, <laughs> or this holiday again. And, but then it, it pays the price and it certainly did pay the price. And, and I think I do have a, a lot of regrets. Mm. Um, you know, it, get, doing those things, they were so, so short term. You know, they were so short-lived, so short-term. And yes, I did have some fantastic times. Um, and I have all the memories. But looking back now, I'm like... Yeah, but the problem is, is that, that I, I don't think you can ever... <clears throat> obviously, you're regretting them now, but like, if you go back in time, you do it again. 100%. 100%. like the problem is is that uh, and it is difficult it's difficult for me now like socializing in the uk i mean for anyone listening to this in other countries where you know the alcohol isn't a big part of people's you know social identity in the uk i mean god most social groups 
if you meet up, you're drinking. Um, and to not drink is, is a real effort. And it's, you feel this like deep down, like, am I being boring? Yeah. <laughs> having more fun if I was just, if I was drinking. So then you're like, oh, maybe I'll have like a couple of drinks. And then, yeah, and then you end up having a lot of drinks. Literally, literally, it's so true. Yeah. I think you like cling on as well to who you were before. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, people loved me when I was drunk or, you know, when I was fucked up. So. Yeah. And I, I remember saying to him, my friend, actually, the only time when I don't feel any symptoms is when I'm drunk. Uh, yeah. But obviously, it comes back with a vengeance, like 100%. When, when you're hungover. So, you, you know, you know, it's a bad idea. But it's um, even this month. So I, I've tried to every now and then what I'll do is I won't drink for quite a while. I went like, like 10 months uh, once, which was crazy. Uh, but I, bear in mind, I, I, I think from the ages of like 15 through to probably about 28, I don't think I had a week off drinking. So that's yeah. uh, but now like, I do these stints of like not drinking and then set, I'll save it up and I'll have like you know, like a month where I go and drink with a few people. And I was going to do it around Christmas. And then before I knew it, I was booking in like, oh, I'll have to have a drink with them. I'll have to have a drink with them. And then before I knew it, I've got like 10 social occasions exactly. where I'm drinking. Uh, exactly. No, exactly. And you want to do it, don't you? You know, you do want to do it. And it's like, I can't do it. So, um, and I think, like you like I just pushed and pushed and pushed myself to do it um and then I realized okay that is not working that's not working for me you know I'll, I would go out on the weekend and I'd be recovering for five days after um so now I have found like a really really good balance um and just I do I still party you know I do still go out I do still have fun um but it's it's at a much better balanced place, you know, rather than every weekend, every Friday, just to mask the pain, like you say, um, and to numb everything. I just go out and, you know, just to enjoy myself and, and enjoy the experience a bit more. Um, sometimes I'll, you know, go a little bit too far. I'm still young, whatever, you know, and, and I deal with the consequences. It's, it, you know, it's fine. Um, I think that's, look, I think it's, there's, there's the good thing about that. It's like teaching you like in your moderation, something you probably wouldn't have done like years in advance. I, I, I still struggle with moderation. So I just abstain. So I just, I'll, I'll go like long periods of time without drinking. But I think before anyone thinks that you and I are both raging alcoholics. Uh, <laughs> I think they probably do. <laughs> The point of this to anyone who's listening who's like, okay, that's not like a thing for me. What it really is is these, you know, chronic illness forcing you to live a life that was very different to what you had before, and therefore making the situation a very lonely one. Uh, and not not lonely by I'm not with people. Lonely from a mental point of view because you're just missing and craving what you had before. Um, and I think that's, I think it's important to say that, uh, just in case people think, you know, it's literally just about alcohol. It's about, it can be about anything, you know, sport, um, you know, uh, travel, uh, you know, your sister, your sister went traveling. Um, so how did you, so you've improved to, so from the point where, you know, you were getting loads worse, um, you then started to get better. Could you talk a little bit like how that happened, like what it is you, you did and, and where you're at today? And, and can you talk a little bit about the, the company you've started as well? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, so yeah, you touched then on like how obviously it's not all about alcohol at all. Um, and so, I'm obviously I lost that part of my life that you know the fun bit, whatever. Um, but I also did lose the the career that I had I'd built um, because when I said you know I was shaking at competitions, throwing up, and um, and I went to this one championship one summer and I just said, you know, I can't, I can't do this. I'm stuffing all these pills into me just to, you know, ride for, um, compete for, you know, 10 minutes. It, it, it's not worth it. So 
I then took that decision. I stopped um, and I sold my main horse, um, which was really, really difficult. And then I just said, right, I'm going to, I'm going to stop, you know, six months, eight months, whatever it takes. Um, I've got to just focus on myself hundred um, percent. And I'd been riding since I was three years old every day you know so um 15 years at that point right? yeah and i was competing for my country as well so it was giving up all of that um so i sold her and that was actually the the you know <clears throat> the hardest but the best thing that i did because those six months just gave me like headspace and time to really recover and I got a fantastic therapist um and I just want to say you know if anybody is listening that like is struggling I'm sure they are you know therapy is the best thing even when you think that you don't need it because I was convinced that I didn't need it um until I went to that first session I thought shit you know I actually did um could you could you talk a little bit about that because it interests me as well because initially when I first uh, I'm always battling between fixing me physically and fixing me mentally uh, yeah I know they're not a separate thing they are together I realize that but there are a lot of like physical treatments and then there are a lot of uh, you know mental treatments which will and and by fixing yourself mentally you'll be in a far better position to heal like could you talk me through that like what so what was was it was it therapy based on like past trauma was it based on your like what what was it you don't need to go into no no it's fine no no it's fine um so it was she's i she's quite um i found it was quite like she's a holistic sort of therapist um she's very much into you know meditation healing and it just really resonated with me um, I think it's important that you find the right type of therapist for you. Um, like clinical ones for me weren't right. I just didn't feel that they understood. She's a, um, This one was a lot more about the body and how to connect your body and your mind. Um, so... Yeah, when I started going to her, and I think it was, I listened to a podcast uh, that you did with Felix, mm -hmm. and he said something that was, you know, I'd, I'd said to myself about a hundred times, I'd rather, I'd literally rather kill myself than be here and living with this and in this pain. Um, and... I think <clears throat> that was probably like the hardest time, definitely. Um, but since going to her, you know, it's just it's just done a flip, you know, it's just done a massive flip. And I think I started going every week and then I started going twice a week um, and then started going once a month and it, and even I even say to my friends who don't struggle with any, uh, you know, mental health or any illnesses or anything, I say, you should go to therapy, you know. You know, you really, really should because everyone should just at least have somebody there to talk to. And um, Yeah. So was it, um, did it help you, because you mentioned acceptance earlier, is that is that what, it really helped you to do um but what do you feel it did obviously it did a lot for your mental point did that translate into your physical symptoms you feel or was it more the, the like the medication or, or whatever you were taking yeah i think <clears throat> i think it was definitely like you say when you're in the right mindset you know um then you can overcome it and because it's it's like everything in life, you know, if you've got that that mindset, that that 
you're in the right place, then you you can achieve what you want to achieve and, and do what you want to do. And um, all those dark thoughts just, you know, once they started to disappear, then I really, really saw a, an increase in my, in my health and um, just started to get a lot, lot better. My body felt more positive because my mind was more positive. Mm. Um, and I know there's, you know, there's a huge, huge, huge pandemic on, on mental health. Um, mm. And yeah, I was just so lucky that I, that I just went to that one, you know, that one session. So I'd urge anyone, anyone to do it. You know, it's really important. You, know, you say lucky, like you're, the fact that you were open to doing it and you, you sort it out and that was something that you wanted to do. Like, yeah, you're lucky to find that person, but, um, you know, it's impressive that, you know, that that's, you know, you realize that that was something you needed to work on. Um, so you know, I think that's amazing. Um, with regards to, um, like, do you think it was, you said you're in a dark place in that dark place. We could you see no way out as in you couldn't picture a, a future where you were, um, better, but then when things started to get a little bit lighter, that was when the belief started to come and then things started to progress at a quicker speed. Would you say that's right? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think because you know, like, when you're told that you're living with this for the rest of your life and then you just you you don't know how you're going to live with it the rest of your life you just you just don't know how and you think I don't want to live with it the rest of my life um so I would rather just not live it you know um and but she just really guided me and helped me through that and and then now I'm in a totally, totally different space where I'm living with this and it's, you know, it's part of me and I accept it and I actually use it as like a power now, you know, every time something remotely bad or difficult happens, I think, Jesus, it's fine. You know, I can, <laughs> I've dealt with all this, um, you know, stuff. Um, it's definitely it's definitely a strength now, you know, rather than, than a, than a weakness. Mm. Um, and it takes time. It does, it does take time hundred percent. Um, but once you get to that other side, like you say, once you get to that light, it, you know, it, it's great. And I think it gives you a lot of empathy as well to people. Um, and to help other people, you know, that I think that's the best thing that we can do. Mm. and so where like where are you at today like health wise like as a you know say as a I know people like to talk in percentages of like where 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 they were at before and kind of like where where you're at now I, from what I understand you still you st there's still a little bit further for you to go maybe is that is that right yeah so see so I think we spoke um about a month ago on the phone and I, I definitely said oh I've got a long way to go um but I've been on antibiotics for two years with a doctor um <clears throat> and then after the podcast that you did which I was so grateful for with Felix yeah. um where he was like you know I sacked those antibiotics off yeah. um not that I'm a doctor I'm encouraging anyone to do so but yeah. it just it felt like the right thing for me to do I thought right I'm gonna sack them off they're actually not having an, a good effect anymore um and I went to a herbalist doctor and he since then I've just been like on a net you know I've been amazing I can't even tell you um yeah I used to walk around with a hunchback for about two three months um I couldn't walk if I didn't have a hot water bottle on my back. And now like I'm doing, I ride like eight to nine horses a day. Um, wow. <clears throat> and it's just, it's been the best thing. And I'm still really, really like early on in that, in that journey. Um, when you had like one session with him and the stuff is disgusting. <laughs> um, you know, it's really, really gross, but 
Um, it just tastes like a shot, so it's fine. <laughs> and um, it's it's been amazing. So I think it's important to like definitely listen to the doctors and the advice if you have a good doctor. Um, but I think what was so great about what Felix says was, was you know, you know your own body and you should really listen to your body and and find actually what's best for it because sometimes you know, the doctors they don't know sometimes you know and I know that with my sister and my mum as well yeah. I mean particularly with like chronic stuff um I, I've had yeah a, a kind of right old time trying to get the right treatment for mold but no doctors in this country know what the hell's going on to it's and it's not their fault they just don't have the education um that, that's needed for, for stuff like this um but that's uh, that's so cool that uh, that that you like made that decision well off the back of the podcast that's brilliant i know i know honestly uh, i'm so glad i listened that's amazing but i think more i think it's really it's amazing that physically you're improving but i could tell when i spoke to you last time like you're you you're in a good place mentally and yeah. it's it's like me at the moment so like i'm in a far better place mentally than i was physically i'm not there but that i know that will come and i know there's still you know way to go um but i it's not the only thing that i'm like focusing on in my life like i'm, I'm i know there's i can live with this whilst you know and try to recover whilst i do the good things with my life and and that's what I sense from you, you know, you've, and can you, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? You said you've set up a business and why did you decide to do that? And, and at what point did you do that? And yeah, how's it going? Yeah. So, um, when I started to feel a bit better, I just thought, right, I'm going to get back on my feet. I'm going to, you know, because like you said, it's, you can't focus too much on it. Otherwise it does take over. Um, so I bought myself a new horse after getting rid of that old one. And um, I just thought, you know, this is a new chapter. I'm going to start afresh. And <clears throat> then I opened uh, my business that basically helps. Um, and I coach young dressage riders, aspiring dressage riders like I was. Um, and I just helped them to, you know, succeed their dreams and what they want to do um and then I also you know ride other, and now I compete other people's horses for them um and yeah my business it's just it's it's something that just really keeps me going you know and whatever that is whether it is your business or the gym or <clears throat> I don't know, you know, any hobby or anything, you know, it's, it, I think it's so important that you just, you do pick that up and, and you run with it, you know, you roll with it. Um, because it's like when I do do my business and when I'm riding, I just forget about everything else. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and then I think that's really, really healthy. Um, and I'm a big believer in giving back, you know, to everything. It's, it's good karma. Um, and I think I love my business because I get to, you know, just help people that, that were exactly like me. I love and, it. And do, you know, doing what you what I love. I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's hard. It's very, very difficult running a business. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's just a normal tax. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was there a point for you where there was kind of a, a bit of a turning point like um, mentally where you could have gone one way uh, where you know you could have just spiraled and got worse and worse and worse um, and then but then actually there was a defining moment where you were just like right no actually that you know I'm going to take this path and I'm going to keep going and keep going and keep going and you you stop having those darker thoughts yeah do you know what i think it was lockdown really yeah <laughs> yeah the first one i think it was um 
I don't know if you agree, but it, it you know, it sent everything into turmoil for sure. Um, and for me, especially, I think it put a lot of things in perspective, you know, life, it, life is short. Um, and we're all actually, you know, we're just in a, in a bit of a simulation. Um, and I think I just decided like, that, and that's in the lockdown is when I bought my horse as well. Um, and I just, I think, decided like, I've, I've got to do something. Mm. You know, I can't, I can't just, this, this is crap, you know, sitting in bed all day and, and um, feeling sorry for yourself, as, as nice as feeling sorry for yourself is sometimes, um, and healthy, but you know, I think, yeah, it was lockdown. As weird as that sounds, because I know lockdown's been awful, but that was a turning point for me. There wasn't anything to do with the medication or anything. It was just like, you know, a life experience. Mm. Um, that's affected us all. It, so the, that, that ho the horse you bought, for me, that sounds like it's, it was kind of a... A catalyst. A, yeah, and a symbol of like, okay, no, this means I have to go and do something with this because, I, you know, I've, I've, I've bought it. That means I have Exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah that must have really kick-started you into doing what you're doing and I guess if at that point you would realize that you would be where you're at today would you would you kind of even have believed that at the beginning of this year no definitely not it was totally it was for me it was like right I'm giving up that's it I'm done um you know all the dreams like just they just crashed mm. all of them um and then I got him I'm going to get really emotional now. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he just, it was a reason for me just to get out of bed every day, you know. Um, and they are so therapeutic because if you're having a shit day, they don't know. Um, I think, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting really emotional. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, but... Um, yeah, and things things are just so you know so great, and I think I feel like I said before, like earlier on, you know, like I wasn't normal, I wasn't normal person, but I do I do feel normal, mm. um, because I think everybody everybody has has problems, you know, and and well, no one's normal, are they? Oh. <laughs> um. No, I think it's a, the fact that you, I think to anyone listening to this, it's just, uh, it's, it, it's inspiring to anyone listening to think that in this time of the year, you could be in a position that you could have never, ever pictured you being in. Uh, and that's something I think about quite regularly at the moment. Like I think about what life could be like in a year's time and what it will be like. And it, a lot of that comes back to kind of, I don't know how much you've looked into this. I certainly wasn't looking into it when I was 22, but like visual, you know, visualization, uh, like manifestation, all of that. Kind Absolutely. Of yeah. And that's the problem of like, when you're in that negative mindset, you actually manifest and whether you, whether anyone out there buys into this notion or not, I mean, I would suggest that you do. <laughs> if you're constantly thinking about really negative things, you're constantly thinking about you never being able to get out of bed, all of that kind of stuff that's what will happen and uh, that's and, and that's why that's what I believe anyway whereas if you you bought that horse and suddenly you could start to picture yourself riding the horse and then then it just started to develop and develop and I just think that's such an amazing thing for people to be listening and I would just urge anyone listening to do that and just write write down what your future will be in a year's time from now and make it the, and if you think it's ridiculous write write it uh, and I, I think you're, te you're like an example of that. If you'd have written down where you're at today, doing what you're doing, you know, you know, still going out, go, going out with your friends, enjoying yourself in a year where most people have had a, a shit year. I know. Um, you know that that's that's amazing. So no, I think that's you know inspiration for, for anyone listening. Um, so in terms of like looking back on your journey into what you're going through now, 
like what are the the main positive things that you can take from this like let's say you know you you never ever got got sick and it, ne it never happened and you were just living the life you were meant to live had you not got sick like what would be the differences there and what would be the positives of this kind of the path you've gone down i think um the biggest there are, there are a lot of positives actually you know the more i reflect on everything um the more that i realize you know it and we we all say in the house as well you know family like it, it was a blessing although it was hard it, it it really was a blessing because we are a stronger family now obviously that's that's personal um but also i live such a healthier lifestyle now you know um you eat healthy you look after your body you know that those are things that people my age you know don't do as you know I, I see them they don't do at all they eat like junk food and crap and um you know i get to feel really really good in my body every day and i think that's a real positive mm -hmm. um i think another positive is that you ha you learn to just empathize with people you know for just the smallest things they don't have to be walking in your shoes, but, um, or you walking in theirs, but you can, if someone's ill, you can empathize with them, you know, or, or if they're having a shit day, you can really, and that I think means a lot to people. Um, mm. I don't think I would be as empathetic as I was, as I am, mm. if it wasn't for the, for what I've gone through and I've been able to help a lot of people that way. And, um, and I think another positive is that I've just, this, this is the, this is <laughs> the podcast, you know, if it wasn't for the podcast and, uh, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have changed my medication and things like that. So it, it all just comes in a cycle, doesn't it really? Um, yeah, there's, look, there's a, there's a lot there. Uh, I just, from what I, and it's, it's how I feel about, about it all as well. It just makes you a better person uh Absolutely. Having, i don't want to be like arrogant or, or whatever no 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 i know more the and when i say a better person i mean like yeah about health and stuff i feel like i'm better equipped now for like you know children with the advice you, you know you'd give to them uh you know i also feel like you know you mentioned that there's, there's a pandemic mental health wise there's certainly a pandemic you know um or an epidemic or that I don't know which one yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a chronic health wise and I know for a fact that someone in my life you know are gonna it's gonna have something similar at some point and I'm gonna yeah. be able to help. um and, and whether that be you know from a mental point of view supporting or actually with a lot of suggestions yeah uh, I think that's like a huge positive in itself uh, yeah. and it has just forced me to and I really get that sense from you considering how young you are that it's forced you to look at the, you know, the other side of life, like the spiritual side of life. Um, mm. The fact that you know about, you know, manifestation, visualization, the fact, you know, you've, you've been speaking to a more holistic therapist. Like, I just didn't think like that when I was your age. And a lot of people, you know, w wouldn't either. Um, so I think you've, you've grown, sounds like you've grown up a lot, but like not in a, <laughs> not in a bad way. Not, you know, you know when people get really boring when they, when they do No, no. <laughs> that's not what I mean you're you know you've grown up in the sense that you're you're I think it takes a long time for people to be a lot more comfortable in their own skin and mm. going through what you've been through you know I'm, uh, that's what I, I get from you that you, you know you are more comfortable in your own skin yeah definitely definitely you know you, you've got to grow into yourself haven't you um even if it's not how you expected to yeah. um then you know that you do and and you know, you've got to learn to love yourself. I know that sounds really cliche, um, but you know, you, you do. And I, I, I do, I man, like you say, manifest a lot. Um, and rather, and it, rather than manifest on, uh, rather than, you know, focus on, oh, my body's so shit, my body can't do this. And 
um, I've got all these pains, you know, manifest on what your body can do. And, and, you know, it gets out of bed every morning and, or it, it, it goes to the gym and things like that, you know, it's those little things and actually our bodies are stronger than we think. Um, so it's, yeah, it's really important to just keep, keep pushing and keep going definitely. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, just my final question. Um, so Pete, someone listening to this right now, uh, you know, any young people listening to this, but a- anyone really who's, because you know, I've taken lessons from this, just speaking to you, you know, from, from this and, you know, what you've been through in your story, but what would be your advice to someone going through something really tough right now and is, is, is feeling pretty helpless, um, can't see a way out, like what, what would be your advice to them? Um, so my advice would probably be to like, don't, don't shut away. I think that was my, if I could change anything, you know, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have shut away for as long as I did. Um, so do you you mean in the sense that like ask, like letting people know what's going on? Letting people know what's going on. Um, it doesn't even, you know, have to be a therapist, just somebody, you know, just let them know. Um, and I think, a, you know, a problem shared is a problem halved, and that is so true. Um, so, you know, don't shut away. Just don't, please don't. And if you want to contact me, you know, if, if there is anyone listening and you, you don't know how to talk to someone, then, you know, contact me on on Instagram or or Facebook, whatever. Um, Because once you just start that conversation, you know, it's so much better. Um, And go to a therapist, honestly, go to one, even if it's one time and you think that's not for me, go because you you won't regret it, really, really won't. Um, And yeah. I think I think that would that would be enough. and just focus on what makes you happy, you know. Mm. No, I, think, I think it's it, look, it's really it's really good. But even to anyone thinking out there, like I don't want to go to a therapist. But what you're saying is what I'm getting from what you're saying is that you haven't even mentioned like uh, a like medical treatment. It's more like you know assess what's going on with your 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 mental state. So you know. And that can be anything, that can be meditation, that can be anything that's going to put you in a better mental frame of mind to, to deal with what you've got going on. And then you'll have a better solid platform to push on and, 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 and do whatever you know, needs to get done for you to recover, for you to do what you want to do in your life. Um, yeah. And I think that's great advice. Um, oh, I just want to touch on something else. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. For, like... Um... I just got one more thing that I want to say then. Um, be transparent on social media. I think it's really, really important that um, I think we can't shy away from social media and pretend like, you know, we're a different person on there, which I did for a long time. You have to be transparent because you're, you're just, again, creating a false, you know, a false person or a false hope I think um it sat with me much better internally when I was just so much more transparent and I knew yeah it's out there everyone knows or I'm having a shit day people know you know um just don't try and show that everything's great all the time because it's not for everyone you know yeah definitely and also if you're looking and if you're looking at other people's profiles on social media know that yeah exactly they're dealing with as well so don't take it seriously don't take it seriously don't live in that bubble um so yeah just just before we go uh you mentioned instagram facebook um could you just give people i'll include it in the in the notes but um yeah what what's your what are your handles and are you okay with people reaching out to you yeah absolutely so it's um megan roberts with a zero for the O and two S's, um, yes. and then <laughs> and then it's uh, there's Megan Roberts dressage. If there's any like you know I don't know horse fanatics out there, then I'd love to chat about horses as well. <laughs> um, 
and yeah, Megan Roberts on, on Facebook. Um, and if you check out my Instagram, as well, I've got a really cool pool thing going on too. Um, so what, sorry? A pool. A cool pool? A pool thing, yeah. You check it out, check it out. It's cool. What do you mean? Is it a swimming pool? It's a swimming pool, yeah. We, we, um, we found it at the bottom of our garden. and um, Yeah, check it out. I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you found a swimming pool at the bottom of the garden? Just Basically, like, yeah, and um, your <laughs> yeah, and it has like I haven't used it for years, like years and years and years. I haven't used it for years. Um, so in the last lockdown, we just uh, uncovered it and uh, did it all up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out because I just I go check you, it out. You're walking around your garden, you're like, oh, we've got a swimming pool. <laughs> check it out. It's on TikTok as well. You'll see it on TikTok if you got TikTok. Cool. Uh, well, look, thanks so much for, for coming on. It's been amazing. Uh, I love your story. Uh, I think it's going to help so many people. So, yeah, really appreciate you coming on. No, no, I hope it does. You know, I, I'm all for help people. I think, you know, we could all do with a little help, can't we? So thank you so much for having me. Honestly, it's been really, really good to chat with you.